welcome back to another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how you can reorder and rearrange collection view cells. So here we've got our collection view and what I'm able to do is pick up a cell and move it around and you can see things are shifting super nicely and we can drop this guy wherever we want and things stay put. We can pick up another cell and it's pretty slick uh, how we do it. And yeah, we're gonna basically be building what you see here. So that said, make sure you smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm, get excited. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe while you're at it. Get Xcode ready, get excited, let's jump right in. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. Let's get started by creating a new project and we're going to stick with a single view application. Let's call this project my collection view. And we were supposed to save it on our desktop, but it looks like Xcode just crashed. Interesting. Okay. Uh, let's try that one more time. Hopefully this works this time. So let's create that project again. Single view app. And we're going to say my collection view. There we go. Save it to our desktop. And let's expand our window to give ourselves a little more room to work. And let's get into our view controller. So first things first, we want to basically set up a very basic collection view. And then we can take a look at how to actually do the reorder uh, with a gesture recognizer. So first up, select the simulator, hit Command R to build and run. And we should see our uh, app load up in here in just a second. Give it a few. Hopefully it doesn't decide to take too long. There it goes. OK, so collection view. So we're just going to do it in code here. Uh, you're welcome to do it via uh, a outlet and a storyboard. So we're going to say collection view is a UI collection view uh, optional. We're going to make sure we conform to three protocols. So UI collection view delegate, UI collection view data source, and UI collection view flow delegate. Let's see. We want UI collection view delegate flow layout. I always say that backwards. So now that we have that, we want to create this collection view in view to load. It's going to be a UI collection view. And we're going to initialize it with a frame and a layout. So the frame by default will be dot zero and the layout will be layout. And we're going to create this layout right above. So let layout will be a UI collection view flow layout. And we can create it like so. The other thing we want to set on this layout is, whoops, layout dot, we want to set the scroll direction to be vertical. And we also want to set the item size. So layout uh, item size is a CG size. And we're going to create that with a width and a height. We're going to say view.frame.size.width divided by three. Whoops, let's get rid of our antivirus pop up. And same thing for the height. And actually, let's divide it by 3.2. And this will just give us a little buffer between each of these cells. So that's why I do the point two. And then the last thing on the layout that we want to do is define the insets. So we're going to say UI edge insets. Uh, 
top left, bottom, and right. We're just going to say zero all around, like so. Now on this collection view, we want to assign the delegate, the data source. Let's give this guy a background color of white. And finally, uh, let's add this as a sub view. So we're just going to use a force unwrap. Uh, you can optionally do a guardlet to unwrap this collection view. The reason we made it optional here is so we can reference uh, self, uh, this view on self to create the layout and then pass in the layout in the constructor for the collection view. But now that we have this collection view created, we're going to do, uh, we're going to override view did layout sub views call super on this and we are going to set the frame for a collection view to be view.bounds which is the entirety of the screen and let's also do uh, we need to bring in a few functions for the collection view so number of items we're going to return 10 and we want a cell for item and this function requires the actual cell to be returned uh, for the given position. So we'll say let cell collection view. And we want to DQ a reusable cell uh, with the given ID and index path. And let's copy that for a second. And let's say cell dot background color. Let's say link, which is a blue return cell. And let's make this color. And before we can actually run this, let's uh, register this identifier on the collection view. So collection view. And we want to register a UI collection view cell dot self for the reusable identifier that we provided down below in this function. So let me zoom out so you guys can see everything and then let's run this and make sure that we have our collection view showing up. So hit command R and there we have it. We have our collection view. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to create an array of colors uh, and then use that array to uh, set the color of each cell. Uh, and the reason being is when we start moving things around, I want to make sure that um, the colors are retained and whatnot. So let's create a uh, array here called colors. And it's going to be an array of UI color objects like so. And we'll say link and system green, system blue, uh, red, system orange, black, system purple what else do we have did we do green we did green already system yellow and we're gonna run out of color soon is pink a part of this system pink that works this seems to be enough let's align those and now let's use this colors array so we're gonna say return the number of uh, items will be the number of things in the colors and the background color will be the colors array and the given item in colors. So hit command R one more time. We should have a collection view with our varying colors now. We only have nine, I guess, uh, which is good enough for the purposes of this video. Now let's talk about actually uh, reordering. So to reorder, we want the user to be able to first uh, click on a cell and basically pick it up and start moving it around. So we're going to leverage a long press gesture recognizer and we'll see why in just a moment. So in view to load, we're going to say let gesture is a UI long press gesture recognizer. And if you open up the constructor of the parentheses, we're going to use target and action. So target itself. Action is going to be a selector. And before we fill this out, let's create this function down here. So prefix it, Objective-C, function, uh, handle, uh, let's call it handle long press gesture. And it's going to take in a gesture of UI long press gesture recognizer. 
And in this selector now, we can just pass in this handle long press gesture. So handle long press gesture. And before we finish up a view to load, we just want to add uh, to our collection view this gesture. So we're going to say this, uh, add gesture recognizer, and pass in that gesture. So now in this function, we want to first unwrap our collection view. So we're going to say guard let collection view equals collection view, else we want to return. So now we know our collection view is not nil. And we want to switch on the various states of our uh, gesture. So we can say switch gesture.state. And there are three cases we want to handle here. The first one is begin. Next one is, I believe, changed. And last one is ended. And we're going to keep this default case here as well. So essentially what we want to do is once the user starts long pressing, we want to find what cell they are long pressing on and long tapping rather. And we want to start the kind of movement of that cell. So when they drag around, the cell moves with their finger. And if they, uh, if they uh, move around and changed, we want to update the cell right? Like the position. And when they, when they end with the gesture, we want to um, basically end the movement. So let's do uh, these two first and default. And we'll take a look at begin after because that one is a little more involved. So for ended, we're going to say collection view and interactive movement. For default, we're going to say collection view dot cancel interactive movement. For changed, it's going to be collection view dot update uh, interactive movement target position. And the target position is going to be gesture location in view. And that view is going to be our collection view. And the one which is more interesting, and I think that does the heavy lifting here, is the begin. So in begin, we first want to get the index path in the collection view at which the user is long pressing. So we're gonna say guard let index path equals the collection view. And we want the index path uh, at item position. And we wanna pass in a CG point here. So in here, we're gonna say gesture location in view. And we're going to, again, pass in that collection view. And if we're not able to get an index path, we are going to return. So you might be thinking, why would we not be able to get an index path? And the reason is, is you can imagine that the user is long pressing uh, in between cells or maybe in the padded area. So you might not necessarily have the target position be uh, in a given uh, cell. So once we have our index path, and let me actually call this target index path. What we can do in here now is say collection view, and we wanna begin interactive movement at the given target index path. So if we zoom out, we should have all of our errors and warnings over here gone. And before we build and run this, we do need to bring in uh, two more functions related to this reordering drag and drop. And we also want to do one more thing before that even as well. So let's copy this uh, size that we gave here for the item size. Whoops, if I can copy it properly. And we also want to bring in a function to paste that into called uh, item size. Let's see, collection view, uh, layout, cell, blah, 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 uh, size for item. That's what I meant. And we want to return that CG size in here as well. We can fix the indentation with the control I. And we want the two reorder functions now. The first one is can move. So this one here, collection view, uh, can move item at index path. And we simply want to return true. And I believe the other one that we want is did move. So let's see, collection view, and we want did move so 
I think it's this one. Uh, move item at, okay. Uh, so in this one, what we want to do is not return anything, but instead, because the items have moved, we want to swap the positions in the uh, array, in this case, our colors array, which if you recall is this uh, array of UI colors, because essentially if we move uh, an item in our collection view, let's say this blue one to this black one, we want to essentially move all of the items uh, shifted to the left. So let me actually do that to show you what's in what it looks like in practice. The thing to understand is the important thing in here is there is a source index path and a destination index path. So we're going to start by removing the item at uh, the source. So we're going to say item equals colors. And we want to remove at the source index path dot row. And uh, I believe this returns the element itself. So if you take a look at the declaration, you'll see that it'll return the color that we're removing uh, from that given position. And then what we want to do is we want to say colors, I believe it's insert, uh, new element, and the new element is item, and the position is going to be destination index path dot row. And the reason we're using dot row here is because we only have one section. So if your collection view has multiple sections, you'll need to account for the various sections and rows just to make sure you have the correct position in your array uh, that you're moving stuff in. So the reason we need to move the stuff to begin with, like I mentioned, is so the visuals line up, but it's also because under the hood in the collection view, once you've moved things around, it validates that the backing model, the order of the data in here, matches the cells shown on screen. So if you don't move them appropriately and you scroll your collection view, things will jump back to the original positions. So let's hit Command R and see if this works properly and if I forgot anything. So let's begin by long pressing on this blue cell. You can see we can move it around and you can see that things are kind of uh, moving to adjust and give position for wherever I move the cell to, which is pretty cool. And if I drop this here, you'll notice the cell stays. And what happened is it swapped uh, the positions. So I keep saying swapped, and I don't want to confuse you guys by saying it swapped the thing that was here with the blue one, because the thing that was originally here, if you recall, was this orange one. And we're not actually swapping, but we're rather shifting. So everything gets shifted. So let's move this one here. Things get shifted. And yeah, that's basically how you can reorder any type of collection view. And this works for this type of layout. Or if your collection view is horizontal, uh, it's really irrelevant what type, of, what type of layout you're working with. Uh, but the point is, just to recap, you want to leverage a long press gesture recognizer. You want to switch over the states on the gesture. And those are uh, begin, changed, and ended and uh, you want to handle the interactive movement accordingly. And then you want to bring in the two reorder functions. The first one just telling that, uh, telling the collection view that the given item at the index path position can be moved, and then also doing the shift of the data model. So this function is actually interesting because you, what you can allow your collection view uh, to do, rather allow your user to do, is only move certain cells. Uh, which is pretty interesting. Uh, this is more useful, I think, when there are multiple sections. Let's say you have a section where you want to allow reordering opposed to a second section where you don't. But anyways, you guys get the point. So that said, that is where we will wrap up. If you haven't hit that like button down below already, please make sure to do so for the YouTube algorithm. Helps me create more videos for all of you. Uh, if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe while you're at it. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to leave them down below. I try to reply to every single one within a day or two at the absolute max. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.